Hello everybody, this is Kelly Stamps. Many of you ask me in the comment section, Kelly Stamps, how are you so unbothered? Well, having a psychologically abusive parent along with being bullied for having a roller backpack will do that. Aside from being fully numb, I also practice the art of being unbothered. I have my master's degree in disassociating. I do it all the time, even during sex. I'm usually thinking, what am I going to eat for pasta later? But this video isn't about my pasta cravings during coitus. This video is about you. You need my help staying sane, unbothered, and productive during these trying times. I have honestly been feeling hopeless, disappointed, unmotivated, and mildly annoyed at humanity for the past couple of weeks. I managed to stay focused, productive and unbothered, doing these few things. Number one, shutting off social media. You can shut everything off except for my YouTube channel. This is actually necessary for your mental health. I deleted Instagram last week and I feel like a weight has been lifted off my chest. I have an app that tells me how much time I spend on each of my applications on my phone. The app told me that I spent two to three hours on Instagram every day on average. But during this police brutality crisis, I spent over four hours a day on Instagram. Let's put that into perspective. There are 24 hours in a day. I spend about seven and a half of them sleeping, the other seven usually eating, and the rest is watching Law & Order. So let's just go back. I spent over four hours a day scrolling through my phone. Doing what? Watching violent clips that I don't need to see and responding and fighting morons in the comment section. The title of this video is How I Remain Unbothered. I said this is an art form, it takes time. And you can't be mad at yourself if you react to certain things. And I think sensitivity is good. You should feel things. If you don't, you're a sociopath. You need to go seek help. I do react sometimes and this Nonsense going on social media was just hurting me emotionally. I'll give you an example. What sent me over the edge into deleting the app as a whole off of my phone was when these random fashion mood board pages, you know, they, they post pictures of influencers with their like perfect outfits and they're usually in Paris or something. They randomly started posting pictures of me. They didn't ask, I don't really care because it would have put something on Instagram that I don't want to be reposted. But I just thought it was weird because if you go to their pages, they're all just blonde girls who look very similar. Not even brunettes, like they, they don't like y'all either. Welcome to my world. They just were excluding everybody who didn't look like this particular person. So they put their little hashtag Black Lives Matter with their black square and they put a picture of me next to it. Like you might as well have posted a picture of fried chicken. They're like, quick, we need a black girl. Okay. Kelly Stamps, all right, copy, paste, hashtag Black Lives Matter, hashtag Friday After Next, hashtag chicken and waffles. Like they were just trying to make it blackity black as possible out of thin air. So I got kind of angry and I went off. By off, I mean I attacked and left no survivors. And let me tell you, the stampede invaded. They invaded like D-Day. They went to each of these profiles and told them off and leave Kelly Stamps alone. I appreciate that you guys want to protect me at all costs. In particular, this one Instagram page, uh, the owner kind of freaked out and she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, I sincerely am sorry. I did not mean to hurt your feelings by doing this. I'm trying to be inclusive now. I said, and I was still fuming. Like when I go into like, Karen stamps mode, you don't want to piss me off because I'm one of those people who's just calm with my little pumps and my little bangs. But you don't know, I'm crazy. So I sent her a simple sentence, which was, if you took black people as seriously as you took your little selfies, we wouldn't be in this predicament. Sis was so shook, she was shamed. She said, okay, a lot of my followers were telling me months ago that I should be more inclusive. So I decided and I went and collected, she said, I quote, collected, pictures of black girls on Instagram to post. Are we Pokemon? If so, I want to be Mudkit. I went to bed angry because I still felt like she wasn't understanding, but I realized it's not fully her fault. School doesn't necessarily have a whole class on Black History Month. What I want you to take away from this anecdote is that it's not your job to make people realize that they're morons. It is your job to live your life how you want, 
respond to criticism, but for the most part, just block out any negativity. It is crucial, especially right now. This video was supposed to be a general video on how I stay motivated and unbothered, but this is more to what's happening right now, which is that you need to reduce your social media time. Just watch my videos, they're good for you. You need to know that your mental health matters first. Do not waste your time trying to convince people that you're right. They've already made up their mind about you. There's no point. Use that energy and put it towards something else. Number two, stop expecting so much out of people. If you lower your expectations for other people, your feelings will not get hurt when they don't conform to your standards that you've set for yourself. What you think is normal may not be what this person thinks is normal or right or wrong. So like I mentioned with the last story, I think what she did was unacceptable, but in her world, it's not. She genuinely thought that she was being inclusive by randomly posting her first picture of a black girl next to a black square. I had to remember and forgive. The reason why I chose to forgive this Delpo, I'm sorry, that's rude, this person is because she is human. I am also human. We're not perfect. If you expect everybody to be at your standard of living, your standard of what's right and wrong, you're setting yourself up for a life full of disappointment. My third tip to becoming unbothered and having the emotional range of an aglet, living to please yourself and only yourself. I know it's cliche, I used to live for other people and now I just live for myself, but it's a lot easier said than done. I actually executed this in January. I said, all right, clearly this working for other people thing isn't working out. This going to school on a budget thing isn't really my jam. I want to be a rich, privileged student, you know? Like, I want to be that student who works part-time just because they want to have some extracurricular activities. I'm not trying to go back to college and work two to three jobs and maybe get a job after and ugh. So I decided, let me pull up on YouTube real quick make a bunch of money, save money, and go back to school and be privileged. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I took my channel from 6,000 to 100. I think right now I have 138,000 and it's just growing and growing. And it's the hardest way to make easy money. Let's put it that way. Now I have options. I have savings. I have flexibility. I just talk in front of the camera a couple days a week and record. Most of my time now has been spent eating, online shopping, and watching Law & Order. Now I can choose which way I want to add value to myself. Do I find a full-time job? Do I become a YouTube manager? Do I start a second channel? Do I go back to school while doing all of this? The opportunities are endless, but before I was living to please everybody else, as in people who don't even know me. The point is that I changed my lifestyle. I actually dropped the idea that this is the only way and this is what everybody else is doing and instead I'm doing what I feel is good for me. It's nice when you just set standards for yourself and you do whatever you want on your own dime. I seriously would have panic attacks going to work, going to school, because I was thinking, oh man, what if this doesn't work? What if college doesn't work? What if I don't get a job at some fancy place? What if, what if? Stop thinking what if and just take things day by day, and I promise you will be as unbothered as me. My last tip to being unbothered is talking less. If you talk less, strangers are less likely to give their unsolicited advice that you probably don't want to hear. I mean, they still might give their opinions whether you talk or not, but talking less has led to a happier life for me. I talk to my camera, I talk to my friends, but in general, I've kept my conversations very short and limited. I was worried that I was being mean. I'm someone who just hates ignoring people. I was sitting at Washington Square Park yesterday and this homeless lady came up to me and she's like, you got a dollar? I said, no, I'm sorry, I can't help you. She goes, what do you mean? I said, well, I, I can't help you. Like, I do have a dollar, but I can't help you. Because if I gave you the dollar, but I wouldn't really do anything. And I can't really get you a job, and I can't really get you housing. And she cussed me out and said, I'm a coon. I'm like, oh, man, I keep getting cussed out by old black ladies in the park. It's got to stop, man, this black on black crime. The point was, if I just shut up and just ignored her or said no, we wouldn't have had that situation happen. I just like to ramble a lot. Another reason why talking less is good is because I have been a sponge and I am absorbing things around me, making meaning of the events around me. I'm grabbing humor from people, watching people on the street. I realize, wait, New York City is beautiful, actually, in a really ugly, nasty, rat-infested way. I thought, man, if I 
pretend to be extroverted, people will like me more, people will find me interesting, but now I'm just myself, which is somebody who just doesn't really want to be bothered, but if I like you, I'll talk her head off. And since I deleted Instagram and stopped responding to half the people texting me out of the blue, wanting something out of me, I've learned a lot who the real friends are and who's fake. And my closing note is that volume and intelligence are inversely proportional. You don't need to be the loudest person in the room to come across as the smartest. Anyway, class, that is all I have for you. I have to go to a picnic now with my new friend, Anna. Hi, Anna. She's from my subscribers list. And we both are um, black, sassy, and skinny. So we're gonna go meet up at the park. So, bye, I have to go. <laughs>